everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamie Lee and I'm a mixed media artist. Here on YouTube I do lightbox videos, I do time lapse painting videos, and I do some weird art videos where I talk about the weird side of art like paranormal art, art and true crime, and strange tales from art history. If any of that sounds interesting to you I'd love it if you'd hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when I post new videos. Today's video is a little bit of a different direction for me. Today I'm going to be swatching two different watercolor palette, the Sennelier watercolor palette and the Daniel Smith 24 color palette, and you might wonder why in the world I'm doing this, and the reason is because a couple things. Number one, when I first started getting back into art, somewhere around 2014-2015, I was using mostly water-based media. I painted with acrylic, and when I first started doing art again, I took several classes online, and so um, a lot of the artists that taught those classes were using things like um, watercolor paint. Um, I really got into using the Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons, which I still use in my mixed media. They are awesome. And so I've been using water media for a while, but watercolor itself, um, once I started getting into doing oil painting, I kind of just dropped it. So the next reason I kind of started thinking about it here recently was because if you've watched my channel recently, you'll know that I've been doing home renovations and my art studio is not available at the moment because it's being renovated. So I've kind of had to just pick up and do my art here, there, and everywhere, which to be quite honest has been pretty frustrating. I haven't gotten a whole lot done or as much as I used to when I had a permanent place to be at. It's a real pain in the butt to have to take out all your supplies start working knowing that you were you know working on x y or z because sometimes i'm just kind of like i'll do whatever i feel like can't really do that um some of my art stuff is in storage so i can't work on things the way i normally do i don't have all my supplies so it's been kind of a frustrating trip here of late so um for some reason i came across a watercolor video a couple months ago and i started watching some watercolor videos and then i realized hey you know maybe i should try watercolor again. It's been a long time since I've done one and just for the fun of it. So I did that and then I kind of got a little bit of a watercolor bug from that. <laughs> so I decided that I would try to start working a little bit with watercolors here while my studio is in, you know, inaccessible because it's real easy to pull out the watercolor pan, do a watercolor on a piece of art paper rather than a canvas with oils and all the stuff that goes along that, especially mi mixed media stuff which requires a lot of supplies. So I can sit at a table, do a watercolor very easily. Um, so this one is the Sennelier watercolor set. I ordered this from jerrysautorama.com and this is the metal case set of 12 plus 6 free and the price was around I don't know if I paid this or a little bit more um, at the time, but it's like $65 for the set. And Sennelier is a French brand and they use honey in their watercolor as the binder, I guess. I found them to be pretty smooth, actually. Pans are obviously hard, but they're also kind of like creamy smooth, I guess you would say. So here I am swatching that set for you. Um, I'm starting with just one side and I'm going right down that side and then I'll do the other, the bottom row. I also just want to say that um, this set is like, expensive if you're not a working artist or doing art as like your main hobby. You don't have to buy a set like this or the other one that I'm swatching next, which would be the Daniel Smith watercolor set. These are expensive colors, and unless you have the money or are serious about pursuing watercolor painting, I would recommend that you can just get any watercolor set. It does not have to be expensive. Before this, I used the Koi watercolors. They were from Hobby Lobby, and they came in a little plastic set, and they had their own water brush with them, which is a brush that has um, 
a hollow inside. Trust me, I know how it is. For the longest time, I couldn't afford to buy expensive art supplies. I just used what I had collected. Uh, a lot of times family knew that I liked doing art, so they would gift me art supplies and I would use those. Or I would go to Walmart or an art store and I would buy their, you know, cheaper supplies because that's what I could afford at the time. So it doesn't have to be expensive for you to use it. Just use what you have or use what you can afford at the time. And that's always going to be more than good enough. I'm just doing this because I can happen to buy these now and I'm kind of excited to use them just because I wanted to kind of see what the difference was. Everybody talks about, you know, these more expensive brands, so I wanted to see why they were better possibly than the other stuff. Um, what I'm finding so far in comparing them to the supplies that I've used in the past is that they seem to have more pigment to them. So like the Koi watercolors that I used that were inexpensive, those were good watercolors. I used them for doing my 24 days of Christmas like calendar things that I would do. I used watercolors a lot of times for that and they didn't have quite as much pigment as these do. Also the color selection, especially for the Daniel Smith, when you order a set of Daniel Smith watercolors, which I'll be doing next, you get in your order like this fold out like booklet of all the colors they offer it is overwhelming <laughs> i'm a nerd so i spent probably a good 30 minutes sitting with that booklet one night and i just went through and i like circled the colors that i was interested in because they offer just a huge amount of colors and some really cool looking colors so that's fun and you pay for the variety you pay for the quality of the colors themselves that's really the difference i've seen so far so more pigmented and a large variety of interesting colors that you can use not to say you can't mix colors because you can also do that but just that you can have that specific color like right there ready to go instead of having to mix it which I guess is more of a convenience thing so that's the difference that I've noticed so far in purchasing these more expensive watercolors as opposed to the cheaper watercolors that I've used in the past and like I said if this is just something that maybe you aspire to someday you know I was there too I would sit there and I would look at all the cool things and just kind of dream about the day when I'd be able to buy certain things that I couldn't buy then. I was a single mom. I was working at a preschool and taking care of my daughter at the time. I did not have any money for art supplies when I first started out doing all of this. I was lucky if I could even go to Walmart and get the cheap stuff at some point. So been there, done that. Um, I know how that is. It's hard when you're sitting there going, oh, I have this dream that I really want to pursue, but I don't have what I feel like I need to do it. I started with uh, cutting things out of magazines and using gifted supplies and just basically anything I could do to get myself going where I didn't have to spend a lot of money. For the rest of these Sennelier watercolor swatches, I'm going to speed up the video just a little bit and then I'll come back to tell you all the colors that I swatched. tell you the names of the color swatches for the Sennelier watercolor paint set. First at the top is Lemon Yellow. Then we have French Vermilier, which is a bright red. The Lemon Yellow is obviously a bright yellow. We have Alizarin Crimson, which is a deeper toned red.
and then there's carmine, another red. And then we have dioxine purple, which is a very deep, cool purple color. Then we have ultramarine deep. Phthalo blue. Forest green, which is a really pretty dark green. Then we have phthalo green light, which is a lighter, more greenish yellow tone. At the top of the page there is, of course, burnt sienna, which is like a warm brown color. Next is Payne's gray. This one is warm sepia. Then we have Naples yellow deep, which is kind of like a yellow ochre, but a little bit brighter, I would say. Bright red, which obviously needs no explanation. <laughs> Venetian red, which is another more like brick red tone. Then we have Cenaris blue. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've never seen that word before I got this set. Cenarius, maybe? Then there's raw umber. And finally, the last color, I'm sorry it didn't uh, come through on the writing it down, but that one was ivory black, which obviously is just a very deep black. There it is right there. And that is all the colors that come in the 12 plus 6 Sennelier set. Next, we're going to move to the other side of the paper, and over there I'm going to be swatching the Daniel Smith 24 color watercolor palette set. I'm sure prices vary depending on where you get it. I got mine from jerrysartorama.com, and the price was somewhere around $117. It's what it's listed at right now, and um, it said list was like $180, but I guess there was a pretty good discount. It also comes with an empty metal pan for you to put new colors in, which I did get with my set. Here's the set right here. Open up the mixing tray. It does come with the little insert. Uh, the Sennelier one did too that you know, shows you all the different colors. And there they are. And you'll see the set here in just a second. I'm going to set it in the view so you can look at it. Um, there are some of the same colors as the Sennelier, and then um, there are a lot of interesting different colors because Daniel Smith, as I said in the beginning, has like a ton of different colors. Just everything you can think of. And they do include that in this, it's not really a basic set, but it is a kind of like a standard set and they've got some interesting different colors in there. All right, I mentioned for the Daniel Smith set that there is a plastic insert in the watercolor pan that you buy and it just basically gives you a visual of all the different colors along with the name so you can kind of set it up above your tray and you can see which colors you have. So then uh, I also said the Sennelier one did come with that as well. Why would you swatch the colors if they give you basically color swatches? I found that both are helpful. It helps to have the one that they included up above your set so you know what color you're going for because some of them in the pan do tend to look similar and you're not really sure which color you're reaching for unless you've kind of memorized them after using them for a while. But doing the swatches on a piece of art paper helps to see how the color translates onto paper so that you know what kind of tones you're getting 
if it's a bright color, if it's a darker color, what the undertone is. It really gives you a better idea of what colors you're dealing with. And a lot of people do this with watercolors in particular, but it's also helpful to do them with just any paints that you have so that a lot of times paints in the pan or in the tube look one way, but then when you get them out on paper, they look different. And so it really can help you know which color you're going to be using depending on what you know your artwork is and what you're wanting to go for if you're wanting warm colors if you're wanting more cooler tone there is a lot of variation between colors that kind of look similar in the pan but once you get them onto your swatches you're like oh that's definitely a more rosy red or that's definitely a more brick red or you know that kind of thing so that's why it's very helpful to swatch your own colors and have that as a reference for when you're actually painting now what are the differences between the Daniel Smith colors and the Sennelier colors now that I have swatched them both. I feel like the Sennelier colors came out a little more like creamy I guess you would say and the Daniel Smith colors and this is a term that I didn't really know much until I started looking into watercolors but they're definitely more granulated and if you've ever gotten into watercolors before you'll probably hear that term and I guess like I would describe that as they just kind of um, instead of flowing evenly on the page they kind of flow in their own unique ways um, granulating has more of like almost like a texture to the flow and the Daniel Smith colors definitely do that and it really depends on the colors and I'm assuming the formulation of the colors as to how they granulate and what that looks like and it really gives an interesting effect but you've got to be aware of the colors and how they do that so you know how you can use them in your work like if you're working on something that you want to look smooth and you know almost like more buttery then you definitely wouldn't want to use a granulating color to do that because it would not give that effect so a lot of the Daniel Smith colors I found do that they're very colorful and vibrant and as I said they have very unique color tones um, there's way more than are even in the set like I said about that fold out that came with the Daniel Smith set that gives basically a rundown of all their different types of colors they have so many unique formulas that um, you could probably be picking out colors for days on end with the Daniel Smith colors. So that's really the difference I found with the two is that the Daniel Smith colors move more uniquely on the paper a lot of times. The Sennelier ones are pretty much as you would expect uh, with a watercolor and so the Daniel Smith ones you definitely have to kind of understand them and work with them a little bit differently based on what kind of look you're going for. Um, if you're into like more of a grungy, gritty type of look, um, these would be awesome. And you know, if you're into unique, different colors, the Daniel Smith ones are definitely going to give you that. Although the Sennelier ones did have some colors that were just very bright, beautiful colors as well. So it's not like they don't have colors like that, but theirs are definitely a little bit more standard. Daniel Smith are definitely a little bit more out there and for people that like to play around with the colors that are more in the unique category. At this point, I would consider myself more of like learning watercolors at the moment. Like I said, I've used them in the past, but I was also just learning art in general back then. So I was learning skills in all areas, like drawing and composition and everything. So now I'm just kind of exploring something new. I've used acrylic paint, I've used um, oil paints, I've used gouache paints, and now I'm using watercolor paints. So my basically advice to you is if something seems interesting and you want to try it, go ahead and do it. If you can't afford, you know, super expensive supplies, that's okay. You can still try stuff in the basic form and then see if you like it. I mean, that's also a way to find out, you know, I always was like, yeah, watercolor, I'm not really into watercolors. Uh, kind of like, you know, a long time ago, I've talked about this before, but I was like, <laughs> I was literally terrified to use oil paints because I was afraid I didn't know what I was doing so much that it would just be a mess. And honestly, oil paints became one of my very favorite things to use once I got over that fear of using them. 
and I found somebody who taught me how to use them in the correct ways. That's also a very big part of just learning new materials. If you can find somebody or find some information online to help you learn the correct way to use them, it makes such a huge difference. So next we're going to be doing um, the Daniel Smith swatches. I'll tell you the names of all the colors that I swat, and that's coming up right now. There's Buff Titanium, which is like a warm white. Hansa Yellow Light, which is more of a bright yellow. Quinacridone Gold. Hansa Yellow Deep, which is a more orangey form of the previous Hansa Yellow Light. Pyrrole Scarlet. Alizarin Crimson, the same color that was in the Sennelier set. And if you can see it up there in the corner, the Alizarin Crimson from the other set is actually a little bit deeper than this Daniel Smith one. Quinacridone Rose. Ultramarine Blue, which is obviously very similar to the Ultramarine Deep over in the Sennelier set. My apologies, the one I'm doing right now is out of frame and I didn't realize that, but that one is Cerulean Blue Chromium and you will see it uh, when I show all of the swatches. Next we have Phthalo Blue Green Shade, which is obviously going to be a more green tone blue color. Cobalt Turquoise, which I found that this is one of the Daniel Smith uh, colors that is talked about quite a bit because it's quite a unique color. Phthalo Green Blue Shade, Sap Green. Caroline Green, which is almost like a black toned green, I guess you would say. It's undersea green. So there are some very interesting greens in this set. We have Raw Sienna Light. This is Yellow Ochre. Again, we have one that is out of the frame. My apologies for that. You'll see it in a minute. That one is Gotite. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, but it's Brown Ochre. So there's a Yellow Ochre and a Brown Ochre. This one up top is Indian Red. Quinacridone Burnt Orange. Burnt Sienna, just like in the Sennelier palette. Burnt Umber. Raw Umber. And finally we have Jane's Gray instead of Payne's Gray. Here we have everything all together. All the swatches for both the Daniel Smith and the Sennelier set. Here's what I was thinking. I was wanting to do a video where I combined a couple things. Um, I do a lot of lightbox videos, so I figured I would do a lightbox drawing of a photograph that I have personally taken. And then I would take that drawing and turn it into a watercolor painting using these sets because I've been finding that I use them kind of in conjunction with each other. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I would love it if you would leave a comment or leave a like to let me know. And that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Please subscribe if you are interested in more videos like this or in the other videos I mentioned in the beginning. And I will see you next time with a new video. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye!